Hello, this is the seventh video in my game rigging tutorial series and hopefully in this one we're going to finish up this character and get all the controls and everything working. Um, since the last video I have added I've added the controls to the right arm following the exact same setup as the left arm although it does have one exception. Uh, the orientate constraint in Maya sometimes flips and doesn't quite work how you think it would. So I had problems with the auto the auto orientate on the arm. So if I switch it to forward K, select the shoulder control and press cursor up, we get the orientate joint. And here you can see in the orientate constraints I've got the interpret type. Its default is average but I've had to uh, set it to shortest to stop any unwanted flipping. Actually that's that's a good idea in all of the constraints. If we uh, put this to 0.5 so I can get to the center. On all of the main constraints on the main joints, if you ever get any weird flipping or blending, uh, you can usually fix it by setting this to shortest or no flip, but shortest seems to work better. which is back to IK. So now we have the arms all working, the next control I'm going to add is the head control. If we switch to my finished rig, see the head control can rotate as well as translate. And like the arms, I can also switch it between local and global space. I'm going to follow the body or it can stay in the orientation you leave it in. I'm going to start by adding an IK handle to the neck joints. So making sure we're in the animation menus, go to skeleton, IK handle, and for this one we want a single chain solver. So I'm just going to add it from the neck to the head joint. Next we need a control curve for the head and for that I'm just going to use a nerve circle. So if I create one, then hitting W for move, holding down the V key, I can use the middle mouse button to snap it into place onto the head joint. Now the pivot I want exactly where it is, but I'm just going to tweak the, uh, the positions of the CVs just so it fits the head a little better. that to work. And of course don't forget to name the control. We will call it head CTR for control. And I'm going to freeze it. So modify freeze transformations and making sure everything is there. Hit apply. And lastly I'm actually going to delete by type history to get rid of the transform and the, uh, and the create node. And next I need to group the, the head control but instead of just adding a group node, we're going to open up the hypergraph, press F to go over to it. Now if you want to group something or create a group node in exactly the same place, sometimes it's easier to duplicate it, so now we have two. But if you have um, options display shape nodes on, you see the transform and the shape node. So if we delete the shape node, we just have a transform which is basically a group node. And then if I middle mouse drag the control curve onto that group node, we've basically grouped it in exactly the same position. And lastly I'm going to rename this to head grp for group. At this point we could simply just parent the IK handle to the control, hit P. But that means if we rotate our control riding left, it also rotates the the neck joint. Um, we don't want the neck to rotate the same distance as the head. So if I undo that, we're going to create a new locator. Um, call it uh, locator neck orient. Perhaps I'll spell it correctly. Orient. And same again, hit uh, hit W, hold down V, we can snap it into position. 
I want it on the head joint and I'm going to parent it to to the spine if I can get it, there it is, hit P to parent and now we're going to orientate constraint the IK handle to the locator and the head control so I select the head control, the new locator and the IK handle and go to constraint orientate constraint making sure maintain offset is on and everything is going to be constrained we'll hit apply so now if we rotate the head see the head control moves and the head and the neck is following it 50 percent of course depending on your your neck your edge loops and your character you might want it to to, uh, to follow more or less than a, than that but if you select the uh, the orientate constraint on the IK handle you can change the weight values here to change the effect so if I put the head to say 0.75 now the neck follows even less so next we need to add a orientate constraint to the head joint so at the moment the uh, doesn't really follow the control very well. So we select the head control, the head joint, and add an orientate constraint. Everything looks good. Hit apply. So now the head will follow the control and the neck has a little bit of rotation. So lastly, to get this fully working, I want to add translation. So to do that we simply add a point constraint to the IK handle. So I'm going to select the head control again, shift select the IK handle and do constrain point constraint. Uh, they're in the same place so maintain offset doesn't matter. I want to constrain all axes and hit apply. So now we should be able to move our head and rotate our head. Next I want the ability to switch the head rotation between local and global space so I can rotate the spine and still keep the head looking forward. Um, this is going to be set up similar to how we've done before on the arms. So we need two locators, one in global and one in local space. So we already have one here in local space so I'm going to duplicate the locator neck orientate. I'm going to rename that uh, global and by pressing shift P we will parent it to the world. So now we select both locators, the head group and constraint with a orientate constraint. So now same as before we should get 50% uh, hard to tell when the head's left behind. So let's go ahead and parent the head group to the top spine control, or shoulder control, which pressing P. And now we should be able to see. As you can see it's uh, definitely 50%. So next we need to add the control to switch it. So you select the head control, modify, add attribute. Um, I call this uh, root shoulder orient. Uh, it needs to be a float, minimum of zero, maximum of one, Oops. and default and stick to zero, and hit apply. And the same as we've done in the past, we're going to connect this with a set driven key. So if we open up the window load the driver which will be the root shoulder orient and we need to select the uh, the orientate constraint which is on the head group load it as a driver so now when we're at zero we want it to be on the root or the local Sorry, the global. 
So let's change the neck orientate to zero and, and key these. Change that to one and switch these over and key again. So now we can have the head follow the body or we can have it following the root or staying in global. So we have most of the controls needed to animate this character now. Um, but one more I want to add is a master control uh, which will move the entire rig as one. So I'm going to import my cube control curve again. And I'm going to name this one Master Cube. Oops, Master Cube. Uh, I want it at zero, 00 where it is. I'm just going to tweak out the, uh, the verts positions, sorry, CV positions. That'll work. And now I want to parent all the top IK controls to this control. So I'm going to start with the main root. Hit P to parent. Uh, we also want the IK feet. So I'm going to parent those. As well as the IK arms. Hit P to parent. So now we have a control that will move everything. And you can see we're still leaving a few things behind which need to be connected. And those are the uh, our global locators for some of the switching. So I'm going to open up the hypergraph window. If we go to the end we should find there is our neck orientation global locator and the two arms. So these all need to be parented to the master cube as well. And lastly for this, we left our hand switch controls. So if we select the, the wrist joint, making sure it's the deformation one and not the IK or forward K ones. We can just simply parent constrain that control to it. And same on this side. So I want J wrist left and parent constraint. So now it should follow with the hand. Now the next thing I want to do is parent everything up into one hierarchy to keep the hypergraph and outliner a little cleaner. So if we look in here, we now have the goblin mesh, the skeleton, and there's a few IK handles and the foot switch controls and things. So I'm just going to select everything and hit Control G to group it. And I'm going to rename this top node uh, Goblin Rig. So now if you have a scene with a couple of characters referenced, um, this should look a, a little neater. Now while we're making things neat and tidy, um, we should add all our new IK handles and locators to our don't touch layer so that no one can accidentally find them. So if I uh, turn that off I can see that IK handle wasn't added so I'm going to add that. And I know some of our new... Oh, or that one. Uh, some of our new locators up here weren't added so I'm going to add those to the don't touch layer. So now I'm just going to uh, hi, uh, show none and then show IK handles and we can see that uh, that needs to be added. I'm going to do the same for locators and we've hidden all those. So now I'm going to clean up a few attributes, uh, lock a few things we don't want touched like on the hand switch, we only need the IK4K -OK switch. So I'm going to select all the attributes I don't want people to touch and I'm going to lock and hide selected. Same for this side. And 
we probably didn't touch this. Yep. So I want to hide the scale and visibility on the head control. Also, if you select the head and hit cursor up, you get to the head group control. Now you don't want this to be touched at all, so I'm just going to lock and hide everything on here, just in case someone accidentally hits cursor up. Um, and now you can just basically check for things like that. So if you cursor up on this one, we go to the master cube, so that's okay. Uh, the pole vectors, we go to the shoulder control, so that's good. And these clavicle controls, go to J-spine free. So just in case, I'm going to lock everything in there. And if we cursor up the main, it goes to the master cube, so that's okay. The hip controls goes to the hip group, which we've already locked. And the foot control goes to master. And these pole vectors go to the foot, so we're looking pretty good. So looking at the time, I'm going to stop the video here, and then we'll come back with a new one where I'm going to go into gimbal locking and how to, uh, to limit some of that in this rig.